So today I want to show you how I made this encounter stage for your tabletop RPG games. I've seen them made before from pizza pans, but I wanted to make something a little bit bigger. And you can place it on a Lazy Susan to change the perspective for all of your players, or you can give your minis a thrilling ride. So to start off with, I bought one of these pre-made table tops uh, from my local hardware store. It's a two foot diameter, 60 centimeters, which is a, a nice surface to work with. Unfortunately, my foam board wasn't big enough to cover it with one piece. So I had to cut two. And for the first time in a long time, I actually changed my cutting blade so I can get a nice, clean, sharp, crisp edge. You'll notice that my foam board has a bit of a warp to it and I was a bit concerned that if I was just to use the uh, adhesive backing that it might peel off because of the shape of the of the warp so I decided instead of trying to work against that that bowing of the board that I would flip the pieces upside down and glue the non-adhesive side to the wood board Now it's just a matter of compressing everything to make sure it sticks. So I had another one of these tables. And just clamp everything down. After it's all clamped, I put some of these books to good use to weight it down. After the glue's dried, it's time to unclamp it and then peel off the adhesive layer. This was a little bit more tricky than what I expected. Obviously, you can't just leave the, the sticky side up. I had to peel that off separately. And after a little while, I got all of that off. I think next time I'll just use the, the adhesive backing. Next step is to get a bucket, and I wanted to paint the edges of it, uh, so it was a nice black finish. After letting that dry, it's time to carve the brick pattern into the foam. So I just found center by measuring across one foot or 30 centimeters to find the approximate center of the, of the foam board. And then just using a compass, uh, just draw a circle in the middle. And then at this point, it doesn't really matter where, but I just chose one point along that circle and made a circle the same diameter that intersects that one. And then at every single intersection point of those circles, I made more circles. And this makes a really interesting sort of flower petal pattern. Next, I used a marker pen to trace out those circles, but also to really carve in those grooves into the foam board because this is what's going to define the cobblestone. At this stage I wanted to make a larger circle 
and just by using a string, tying it to my pen, and using it as a larger compass, I could draw a rough circle. As for the rows of the bricks or cobblestones, I just freehanded this, eyeballed it in, using the pen to carve those lines into the foam so that they stand out after it's painted. Next, I just wanted to define each of the individual cobblestones. You want to use um, a variety of widths. You want the seams not all to line up, to try to stagger them like you would see with a normal brick wall, but you don't want it too perfect to add visual interest, make sure they're offset a little bit, and that each stone can vary in size. This is the most cathartic and enjoyable part of the entire project I found. Once that was done, I had to figure out what I was going to do with the outer circle. So use the old string trick again to draw a outer boundary. Using the steel ruler, I drew some radial lines outwards to add some visual interest and define these sections here that I'll fill with more cobblestone. The larger stone panels kind of look like pathways or add a little bit of variation to just having a, a solid board of, of cobblestone, which would be visually less interesting. Now I had no idea what I was going to do with the middle. At first I was thinking of maybe putting some kind of symbol or star pentagram, something like that in the middle. Instead I just freehanded this pattern in here and, and it just developed organically as I worked on it. At first it looked like a trivial pursuit token and then as I kept dueling with it, it kind of became a radiation hazard symbol. and eventually became a sort of distinct center focal point. The bricks here are a little bit bigger than the rest of the cobblestone pattern. Now to seal it all up, the old classic Mod Podge and cheap black acrylic paint trick. And just using a cheap brush, making sure not to put it on too thick. You want to make sure that all those details and grooves are preserved to keep that texture. After that dried, now have a black board. And now it's time to decide on a base color. I had a few different 
cheap acrylic grays to choose from. So I thought I'd try both out, see which one worked best. Ultimately, I went with a, I think the brand's called Derivan, and it's a Mars Gray color. And after giving the whole board a base coat, now have a nice gray board to, to work with. Just putting a thin layer of watered down acrylic paint on top. I didn't want to put a, um, a black wash or anything on this. So to maintain that texture and sense of depth of the cracks, I'm just going to apply layers of paint. Now, to add another color, I thought I'd try to mix things up a bit and go with a, a brick red, or this color is called hull red, for the larger tiles and the, the center point. Just to add a little bit of visual interest. And if it turns out that I get sick of the, of the red color and kind of want something less standout-ish, I can always paint the red over with a with a darker gray it's quite contrasty but um, I think it looks good for now now with the uh, base colors done I just wanted to add some details and visual interest and just randomly selecting a few bricks and painting them a, a lighter shade of gray After that dried, I was really happy with the results. It's still different shades of gray and, and the brick red, so I decided I wanted to add a, another color here, so I went with this cold gray color. Um, ironically, even though it's called cold gray, it's actually a very warm gray and I ended up loving this color and how it complemented the other two colder grays that, that I already put on. You can see that it's got a, a bit of sort of brownie warmth to it and gives it a nice sort of organic feel. Then as a complementary sort of accent color, I use this very sparingly. It's this um, bluey green or greeny blue color that's just only on a few bricks here and there just to really make it pop and add a bit of visual interest. This is the same color that I used on the roof of the uh, little farm cottage build that I did. And with that done, um, I'm really happy with, with the uh, way it turned out. So this is meant to be used for temples, it could be a city street. Again, with that red, it's probably less versatile than, than what I had hoped, but hey, I'm happy, for, 
how it turned out as a first little encounter map board. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more of this stuff, uh, yeah, leave a comment or subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Keep smiling. <laughs>